Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ima ba'd The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Clarified for us that there are certain times when the prayer is prohibited When it's prohibited to pray uh, Nawafil uh, prayers, to pray extra prayers and some of those times that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned, as uh, the mashayikh, the ulama, they mention that the oqat and nahi is thalatha, that there's three times when it is prohibited to uh, pray these extra prayers, and the first time is after salat al fajr, after the fajr prayer, until the sun uh, has risen, uh, until the sun has risen. Uh, Basically, the spear, uh, the length of a, a spear. And the second time, so this is after the, after the sun has ridden, risen. The second time is there's a time when it is after Salat al Duha, between Duha and Dhuhr, by just a, a little bit of time before Dhuhr, there's a, a, a specific time where. Uh, it is considered one of the times that are manhiyun anhu, that is prohibited to pray during that time, until the sun, uh, till the end of it, has it has begun to, uh, the end of the sun rise for the for the close to the dhuhr time, and the third time is. After Salat al Asr, until Ghurub al Shams, until the sun begins to set. And in the hadith of An Abdullah ibn Abbas and Radiallahu ta'ala anhu ma qal, Shahida indi rijalun mardiyun, wa ardahum indi umr. And the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam naha an salati bad al subh. Hatta tatlu'a shams. Hatta tatlu'a shams. Wa ba'd al-asri hatta tugharrub. Ruahu Bukhari wa Muslim. In this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam. He prohibited two times for the prayer. And this is the hadith of. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prohibited prayer salat after fajr until the sun has has risen and after salat al-asr until the sun has set and this is collected in Bukhari and Muslim and in another hadith on Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا صلاة بعد الصبح حتى ترتفع الشمس ولا صلاة بعد العصر حتى تغيب الشمس رواه بخاري ومسلم. In this hadith, the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri رضي الله تعالى عنه, he said that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said that there is no salat after the Fajr, after the Subh, until the sun has risen. And there is no Salat after Asr, after the Asr prayer, until the sun has disappeared, meaning Ghurub al-Shams. And that's in Bukhari and Muslim. Both of those hadith illustrate for us that of the two times that we mention, which are the well-known times where the prayer is prohibited. The first being... The first time is after Salat al-Fajr. When's the first time? After Salat al-Fajr. After Salat al-Fajr, it is prohibited to make uh, Nawafil prayer. And the second time is after Salat. Which Salat? When's the second time it's prohibited? Asr. That is mentioned in these two hadith. Asr. After Asr. Jazakallah khairan. So after Asr, if you see someone standing up to pray extra prayer, you should, first you, you may have husn al that maybe they're making up qada, because there is, uh, perhaps they're making up something, or 
uh, a mist prayer or, or something like this. But generally, there is no nawafil, and this is where the ulama, they differ with regards to this issue about what prayers, for example, after Salat al-Fajr, when you see people, because a lot of people, because they miss Salat, uh, the, the Sunnah of Fajr, which the Prophet ﷺ never missed, alayhi salatu wasalam, is a very important Sunnah, Sunnah Mu'akkid, Mu'akkidah, that the Prophet ﷺ didn't miss. So you should always pray the Sunnah of Fajr. Which Sunnah should you pray, Abdurrahim? The Sunnah of Fajr. Jazakallah You should always try to pray the Sunnah of Fajr. And how many rakats is that? Two. Two. Good. And, of course, Fajr prayer is how many rakats, uh, Abdurrahman? It's two. Uh-huh. Good. So, the Sunnah of Fajr is rakatain. It's two rakat. And you want to, as, as we mentioned, if someone misses that, then there is a hadith to support that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, you know, made uh, the fajr after that time. So there, from the fi'l of the Prophet ﷺ, that there is evidence to show that he, alayhi salatu wasalam, that it's permissible to make it after fajr. But something that we need to illustrate here for our, without getting into the ikhtilaf and the, and the uh, what Imam Shafi'i said about the fi'l asbab, the, those, those salat that have a special purpose like salat al-istikhara and, and so forth, that there is no limit, that you can pray those in the nahi, and of course salat al-janazah, but there's ikhtilaf with the ulama, those things. We're not going to really get into the uh, an in-depth look at their ikhtilaf, but instead we're just going to know that the idnillah, the most correct, is that it is permissible to make things like salat al-istikhara during the waqt al-nahi. Or, you know, for, for some necessity like that. Or, of course, making qada. And in fact, if you miss your sunnah of fajr and you pray it afterwards, this is qada. You're making qada of the fajr uh, uh, sunnah because that sunnah is supposed to be before the salat al-fajr. And along with that, something that we need to make 10B of that, that's very important is that when, for the person who misses that sunnah often, do not make that part of your regular activity that you make it up after the, the fajr. So this is a problem. This is where the ulama say that although it's permissible, but the person who does that regularly they miss it and they, they do that afterwards, then this can be fall into a bid'ah. This can fall into a religious innovation and ibadah. And so we want to be away from that. So if it happens to you more than once or twice a week, maybe three times in the week, you miss that sunnah and you get to the masjid in time or what have you, or you just barely get your prayer in the time. That doesn't mean that those three times you're going to make your qada after that. So sometimes it's better to just delay it. To just delay it so that way you don't fall into duam. You don't fall into a regular habit of making the uh, qada of fajr after fajr. You're doing it for five days a week out of seven days. That that becomes a problem and that is on duam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But a person could fall into bid'ah as some of the ulama they mention. So these are just some important uh, things that we wanted to look at with regards to this hadith. Let's hear what Sheikh Ali Bassam, rahimahullah ta'ala, what he mentions. He mentions a lengthy, lengthy discussion of some of the differences with the ulama, but some of the things he mentioned is, one of the things that is uh, we take from this is that, one of the things the Sheikh mentions, rahimahullah ta'ala, is the prohibition of the nawafil uh, salat mutlaqa after Salat al-Asr, that after Salat al-Asr, that just standing up and praying rakatain or araba rakat or something like this is not, is not permissible. It's prohibited. And this is what we get from those two hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is that it is not permissible to do that. Uh, and again, unless a person is making qada or some specific, specific haja, then they should avoid uh, trying to make prayer during that time. Also, uh, another benefit 
is that the Sheikh said that one of the things that we understand from this hadith, it gives from these two hadith, is it, it illustrates for us the illa or the reason for the prohibition. And the illa here, or the reason is that it is out of fear from resembling uh, disbelievers. And that is and that is taken from the prohibition of resembling those other nations that it, that and and following them as a prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said men tashabbaha fi qawm bi qawmin fa huwa minhum whoever resembles a people then he is from them so that shows us in general that we should not resemble in holidays in dress in um of course in ibadah first and foremost and in general cultural habits and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.